Enough! I don't want to hear another word out of you guys. Sit down. Boy, you really did it this time. You really did it. I just want to thank you boys for the most embarrassing night of my life. We are the only family in 12 years to have been kicked out of Wacky Jack's Pizza Pagoda. It takes a lot of work to get kicked out of a restaurant that has a trampoline and a batting cage. But, Dad... No buts. That's it. It was Wacky Jack's fault. He was making those stupid faces at us. He's a clown. That's his job. He didn't do anything. He didn't do anything. Does this look familiar? Wacky Jack's nose. You pulled it right off his face. It's not his real nose. I don't care whose nose it is. Don't pull things off people's faces. Hey, you know what you guys are going to do? You're going to take this nose, you're going to put it in an envelope, you're going to sign a little apology note and send it back to Wacky Jack. And right now, you're going to get out of my sight, go up to your rooms. March, march. Up, up. If I hear any noise upstairs, I'll be up there. And if I have to come up there, you won't want me up there. Hi. What? What? No, no, what? No. Now. We want to watch Full House. No. I just want you to know, I'm innocent. Innocent? Pouring salad dressing down your brother's pants? <laughs> oh, I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> Tim, this is pathetic. We sunk to a new low. Pizza. Yeah, if you take off those mushrooms first. Those aren't mushrooms, honey. I'll pass. <laughs> Would you nuke that for me? Nuke it yourself. <laughs> Don't give me that. You cook for us all the time. We barbecue, cook outside with flame. <laughs> Microwave inside, cook with magic. Flame good, magic bad. <laughs> Microwave good, man stupid. <laughs> Easy monkey boy fires our friend. Hey. <laughs> I mentioned burn the hair right off my knuckles. Damn. I'm gonna count to three and then I'm gonna be up there. One, two. Dad, Brad and Randy are doing bad things. Unless it involves human sacrifice, I don't wanna hear about it. Okay, I'll let you know. <laughs> Little baboons, where do they learn this stuff? Possibly from the big baboon. <laughs> You? You encourage their bad behavior. I don't encourage bad behavior. Oh, yeah? Tonight, when Brad spit his chewing gum across into that plant, you cheer. Chill. That was a 10, 12-foot arc easy. <laughs> right into a six-inch pot, man. Michael Jordan could have made that shot, huh? And I did tell him to stop, too. Oh, yeah, after you gave him a standing ovation. <laughs> I may be wrong, but I think that's sending a mixed signal. Enough said. Now, what are we going to do about our boys' table manners? You should give a refresher course. Me? What about you? I, I'm a man. What do I know about manners? <laughs> I see. So, table manners are the woman's job. Historically, Jill, yes, that's the case. Emily Post, Amy Vanderbilt, and, of course, who could forget Miss Manners? <laughs> I don't recall an etiquette column called Ask Shock. You know, Chuck, I've been eating pot roast all my life. Got that little gristle piece stuck in the middle of my tooth. You suck it out with the tongue. I, I ask somebody to do it. Hop out with yeah. that. Yeah. Pull that thing out of it. Listen, you are the one that encouraged their bad behavior. Therefore, you should have to be the one to teach them good behavior. We should do this together. No, no, you're the transgressor. I never wear your clothes. <laughs> all right, I do like that taffeta gown. I feel <laughs> you know so what I'm talking about. What do you want me to do? I want this family to get through a meal without the boys throwing their food or gargling their milk or talking about boogers. A meal without boogers, huh? That's it. Okay. Never gonna happen. I can give you a perfect meal. Yeah, when? When's gonna be this perfect meal? Tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, I'll sit the boys down, we'll have a man to manners talk. Mm -hmm. You are gonna have three perfect gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Out the window. That's it. I'm coming up there. Honey, honey, honey. So, uh, Al and I finished that.
that subfloor. <laughs> Next time, we'll show you how to lay down that uh, tongue groove hardwood flooring. Now, what size floor is board do we use on that, Al? Uh, Tim, they're three inches wide by one eighth of an inch thick. They'll be fastened down by driving a nail at a 45 degree angle through their longitudinal tongue. Oh, that's gotta hurt, huh? But we do that to hide the nail, don't we? That's right, Tim. I know that sounds complicated, but it's not. And what you'll end up with is an absolutely beautiful dining room floor. Speaking of dining rooms, that brings me to today's tool tip for tool time. It's about etiquette. It's a big word, so get out your dictionary. So the dining room needs two things to be complete. A floor <laughs> and manners. See, when men are together by ourselves, we don't worry about manners, do we? Because, hey, we don't need them. You at the ball game, what's better than a mustard fight with your buddies or spit, <laughs> spit and beer when you hey, buddy. <laughs> hey, hey. My personal favorite, jamming two big french fries up that nose, act like a walrus. <laughs> hey, it's guy stuff, and women don't appreciate guy stuff, and that's the truth. I don't think a woman really understands the diaphragmatic control it takes to do all of the vowels in one belch. <laughs> Use manners. It shows you're civilized. Tells women you're civilized and they'll keep doing things for you. So always remember that. Use the correct fork. Put the napkin in your lap. And always. <laughs> I do mean always. Excuse yourself when you lose a little pressure. <laughs> because I want you to remember, men, the first three letters of manners are... <laughs> See you next week. <laughs> Tim, I found this broccoli in Randy's dirty clothes. Hmm. Either he's hiding it or not digesting properly. Ah! <laughs> Teaching my men some manners. With wooden blocks. Rehearsal food. That's what that is. Well, gee, I hope they don't like it. I don't have any recipes for wood. Sure you do. That meatloaf that you like so much. I don't mean to criticize, but, um... Is this where you want to put the napkins? No, I want it in the proper spot. Let's see, there you go. I was right in the first place. Hey! <laughs> you don't really think I can do this, do you? I didn't say that, Tim. Come on, you don't really think I can do it. Say the word, say it, say it. Sweetheart, I just think that you cannot teach that which you do not know. Really? Really? I'll have you know that that which you think I do not know is that which I know. No, no, no. If I can't whip these boys into shape... What? I, what? I will give you anything you want. Anything. And I think I know what you want. <laughs> no, 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 Tim. That would be the consolation prize. <laughs> I was thinking more along the line of uh, season tickets to the opera. Oh! <laughs> that's, that's a Greek word, isn't it? Death by music. You said anything. That's what you want, fine. But if mm -hmm. I want to see a screaming fat lady with horns, I'll go to your mom's house. Yeah. <laughs> now listen, buddy, a deal is a deal. I'm going to go call the Michigan Opera Theater for ticket information. <laughs> You're wasting your time. Mark! Mark? Yeah, Mark? What are you doing in there, sweetheart? Smelling the inside of the trash can. Why are you doing that? Brad said he would give me a quarter if I did. But is Brad like the garbage fairy now? Why don't you go inside and wash up? Okay. Randy? Brad? Home now. How goes a good neighbor? Hi, Wilson. What are you making over there? Building a porcupine trap. Really? Mm. I don't think there's a whole lot of porcupine in the Detroit area, are there? Ah, but if you build it, they will come. <laughs> what do you want, Dad? I want you to go sit down at the table, all right? Hey, Brad, can I have a moment with you, please? What? 
Your little brother was underneath that garbage can smelling it. Where do you get these ideas? He's just coming. Why don't you go sit down? I'm going to teach you boys some manners. You owe me a quarter. No way, Dad. Enough. That's enough, you guys. Cut it out. Stop running around. Stop, stop. Come here. Sit down. we got work to do. Sit, sit, what sit. What are we doing? We're sitting down is what we're doing. Oh. Now, I love you boys, but you are bad news in the table manners department, so we're going to have a crash course. Why? Why? Because of what happened in the restaurant last night. That's why. I told you it was that stupid clown's fault. <sighs> Better go back and punch him out again. Hey. Never hit anybody with makeup. That's the rule. <laughs> Bottom line here, we are going to have a civilized meal. And I set this table nicely. Put those back. A civilized meal means Brad. No hitting, pinching, kicking, all that jazz on the table. You don't think I see? I see it. Don't do it. And Randy, none of these gross-out stories. The boogers, the scab stuff. Scabs that talk to boogers. Dad, you want to talk about food? Hey. Hey, food. Perfect. Let's talk food. Okay, well, today in the cafeteria, we made Bobby Deavers laugh so hard, he shot peas out of his nose. <laughs> no way! It was excellent. Yeah, but did it have snot on it? Oh. <laughs> We're not going to talk snot tonight. You're going to come down the stairs like little princes, sit down cleaned and washed up, and look around and say, Good evening, Mother. Mom's not here. You pretend she's here. I'll be Mommy. No, you won't. Don't be mommy. That scares me when you say stuff like that. <laughs> Don't mind me. Just pretend I'm not here. It'd be a lot easier to pretend you weren't here if you weren't. I won't say a word. Uh, do you need any help? Thanks, honey, but I've got it all taken care of. Uh, by the way, I did call Michigan Opera Theater. There are plenty of good seats available. <laughs> you guys got to help me out. Got to help me out. Let's take care of this. If we don't do this right, I'm going to spend the next year at the opera. All right, focus, focus, focus. Eating is not just a necessity, it's a job. And like any job, you need the proper tools. These are the tools of the trade. Fork, knife, weaker sister the spoon. Help me, help me, help me. Almost useless crude instruments by themselves. But together, we form the mealtime triad of power. Ah, ah, ah. Tim, I hate to interrupt this grunt fest, but dinner is less than two hours away. <laughs> Thanks for reminding me, Pookie. Thank you. Now, we gotta hustle up. We gotta hustle up. Just the bait. Take the knife out of your mouth, please. Just, just the basics, quick. All right. Tonight, dinner, do not eat with your hands. Well, Nick. what if we're having chicken? Food, food. <laughs> chicken outdoors, use your hands. Chicken indoors, knife and fork. What about live chicken? A live chicken? Fred, who the hell do you hang out with? <laughs> I'm not cussing. Not a bad word. It wasn't bad. Yeah, you said hell and damn. I did not say damn. Now you did. <laughs> control here. Control, control. That's it. You guys now. <laughs> we do exactly as dad does. Listen up. Sit up straight. Sit up straight. Straight? Sit up straight. Elbows off the table, Randy. Randy. Elbows. Stop that. Stop that. Stop that. Stop that. Stop that. Stop that. Enough. Stop enough. That. Enough. Stop that. That's enough. Stop that. That's enough. Stop that. That's Don't enough. repeat me. Stop that. Tim. Looks like you caught your first porcupine. No, just Mrs. Foley's cat. <laughs> Easy, Fluffy. I'm trying to calm him down a little bit before I set him loose. He's not hurt, is he? No, 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 Tim. This is a humane trap. <laughs> of course, that's my opinion, not Fluffy's. So how is the powwow with the boys about the table manners? Wilson, I don't know. Those kids sit down to dinner and they go nuts. Tim, 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 the problem with your boys is they don't know how to channel their mealtime aggression. 
mealtime aggression. See, Tim, primitive man was a hunter. He had an intimate relationship with his food. Not a date with wildebeest going on? No, no. <laughs> I'm talking about spiritual ones. They were at one with their meat. Uh -huh. <laughs> the hunter would stalk and kill his prey, then pay homage to the animal spirit. He would give thanks to the animal for giving its life. But the primitive man in us is confused. Today our food comes to the table. We don't know how it got there. Gives you something to think about when you open a can of Spam, doesn't yes. it? Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Wilson. Right. Well, I think Fluffy has calmed down now. There you go, little buddy. Treat him. <laughs> well, with freedom comes responsibility. <laughs> Enough, enough. Guys, your mom wants one quiet meal, and I'm going to give it to her if I have to duct tape you yard apes to those chairs. Quiet. Okay, we'll do whatever you want tonight. Can we go now? No, no, you can't go now, because I'm going to tell you something. I know the reason why you guys get nuts at the dinner table, because you don't have an intimate relationship with your food. You don't respect what you're eating. You're not getting this. Let me show you what I mean. Hmm. This. Is a chicken we're having for dinner tonight. Oh, yuck. That looks gross. That's exactly my point. This bird gave its life so you could eat. You, you should thank the bird. Dad, have you lost it? You're just missing it. It, it I don't get it. it. It's simple. You guys would lose your mealtime aggression if you had to hunt it and kill it yourselves. Hmm. Tell you what, I'll be the chicken. You be the mighty hunters. Stalk, hunt me, kill the chicken. <laughs> what a wonderful day to be a chicken and alive. Buck, buck, buck. Oh, God, it's hunters. I better run. Flee, run, flee. So they couldn't catch me. Flee. Run, stalk, hunt, kill me. Run. Kill the chicken! <laughs> something. You know what? I think what's dirty and disgusting and gross is when you guys come to the table and tell your booger and scab stories. Fight, kick, yell. I think manners aren't respect for food, but respect for people around you, maybe. Do you guys understand any of this stuff? Yeah, yeah, come on. I want you to think about that for tonight's dinner. Now what do we do? Whatever you want. Randy, honey, do you want some more mashed potatoes? No, thank you. How about you, Brad? No, thank you. No, thank you? No, thank you. That's very polite. Tim, I gotta apologize. I thought you couldn't give me one quiet meal with the boys, and you did it. Well, we can kiss off Madam Butterfly, can't we? <laughs> Not so fast. I mean, you didn't really teach them manners. You just exhausted them. Take what you can get. I might just do that. Huh? I'll be going upstairs now. You want company? No. Just you. <laughs> Shouldn't we take the boys to bed? Nah, leave them. It'll only take a minute anyway. I'm feeling pretty spry, honey. Maybe a minute five, minute ten. <laughs> Laying down that hard. 
hardwood floor. You could use hammer and nails, but why would you? That'd take forever. I think what we need here is... I was thinking right along those lines myself. And look what Al brought us out here. The Benford 311 Series B Power Nail Driver. Thank you, Al. Welcome, Jim. Uh, uh, that's etiquette. Always think of cold. Try to see something nice. Al, good-looking slacks. <laughs> Woo! That bad boy's raw power. Ah, ah, ah. The kind of power you need to attach a phone book to a cinder block wall, man. Uh, Tim, you might want to remind our viewers that the Binford 311 has that new safety lock. Well, I'm sure it does, Al. <laughs> well, it's been completely redesigned. Al, I grew up with these things. Heck, that is a little different than I'm used to seeing, isn't it? Well, all safeties are basically a cylinder. Very impossible to shoot it when you don't want to shoot it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Tell you what. We'll go to a break right now. Gotta be out of this. Boy, that's gotta hurt. Yeah, it does. Feels kind of like that. <laughs> ah! 